The theme was transition. Uh, there's only one particular horrible transition in my life that I felt was reasonable to talk about, and that's the transition of puberty, which I'm very glad I never have to go through again. Because you know you have to do all those just terribly awkward things during puberty. Like in my upbringing, like we had those really strange sexual education classes. We're in a room of similarly sized awkward teenagers hearing about things that you're not really ready to hear about. And I remember one particular class just still sticks with me. And for two reasons. One was because we did that, you know, that famous test of, you know, the banana and the condom, which was terrifying. Like, I've never been more scared in my entire life. And the reason for that is I'm from Australia. And in Australia, we grow some of the largest bananas in the world. <laughs> and like, I'm like just looking at this almighty thing and just feeling so bloody inadequate. <laughs> and the second reason why it stood out was because we got our first uh, session on sexual preference. And they put it very, very simply to us. And they said, some of you, in all likelihood, are going to turn out to be gay. And that's okay. It's the first time we'd heard those words. And so we weren't ready for them. Because remember, this is high school. If you hear the phrase, some of you are going to turn out to be gay, the hunt is on. <laughs> All of a sudden we're looking around, it's like, Tim, it's him, it's going to be him, it's Kim. So it's totally Adam, it's totally Adam. And so that became like the Inquisition. Are you going to be gay? Are you going to be gay? You're a little bit gay. I got asked all the fucking time. <laughs> got asked all the time. People would be coming up to me and saying, whenever I'm near you, my gaydar goes off. Whatever the hell a gaydar is. <laughs> Liddington Cox, my name Liddington Cox, became licking some Cox. <laughs> you can laugh at that, it's been 15 years. It's all good. <laughs> and not all of it was vindictive. Not all of it was aggressive or bullying. I mean, some people recognised that, you know, gayness is kind of becoming less of a taboo in our society. So to have a gay in your group was like a bit of a coup. So like, I kind of felt like I was the target of like recruiters. You know, you'd have people coming up to you and just be like, if you're gay and you're in our group, like, we could take over the world. <laughs> like, we could absolutely, that would just, that would just be huge. We could be bigger than Elvis. But you've got to do your part. Be gay. It's the right thing to do. Maybe I am gay. I don't know. I was a teenager. I don't have no sense of identity. They never asked the kid, Ben. I've changed his name to protect the innocent, but they never asked Ben. And there was no reason to, because he was so obviously gay. There was no reason to ask him, because there was nothing to be unearthed. Maybe I'm gay like Ben. I don't know. A couple of years later, I was at this party and Ben was there, and we started up this conversation that very quickly started going down this particular path. Before I really knew what was happening, or could do anything to stop it, he had told me that he was gay, told me that he was a virgin, asked me whether or not I would be his first, and then planted a kiss on me. At least that's the way I've been telling myself the story for the last 10 years, because in all reality, I knew exactly where that conversation was going and did nothing to stop it. And it wasn't because I particularly wanted it, but it was because of all that peer pressure. They just made me think that that was something that I was supposed to do. And if that's something I'm supposed to do, I don't know how to get initiated into this community. I need someone to show me. But as I was standing there and I could feel his like, you know, he's like teenager stubble, like pressing on the end of my chin. I just knew in that moment that I wasn't even slightly gay. <laughs> and I recoiled, and he sensed what had happened. And we had this very interesting, very moving conversation about how isolated he felt. Because he was one of the first people that we really knew that had come out at that age. So he just felt utterly exposed and lonely. And it was easier for me, if I was interested in women, um, to pursue people because I didn't have to announce my sexuality. He felt totally alone. And I felt so sorry for him because I guess I'd kind of let him on. And he looked so disappointed and I, I don't like disappointing people. So when he asked me whether or not, are you maybe 10% gay? I was just like, yeah, I'm 10% gay, yeah, what the hell? It'll make him feel better. What's 10% between friends? Yeah, I'm 10% gay. Nothing wrong with that. 
So he's like, so you'd be interested in fooling around to 10% of the time? And I was like, oh, fuck, no. What have I talked myself into? So I didn't say yes to him, but I couldn't say no to him. And so like any great coward, I just, you know, passed the problem up to senior management, you know, passed it up to my superior, so I called my girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, I had a girlfriend this entire time and I still thought that my behavior was like totally acceptable. <laughs> so I called her up and I had the most ridiculous phone conversation of my entire life. I'm like, yeah, Ben's gay and that's okay, but like he wants me to have a night off and I don't want to say no to him, but like, I just, I just, but you know what, what do you think? And when you hear a teenage boy saying to their teenage girlfriend, what do you think? You know, he's totally fucked. Like I had no answers. I was like, what do you think? I want to know what your opinion is on the situation. And there was a long pause. And then she finally said, don't you remember anything about sex ed in high school? I'm just like, yeah, I remember the lot. It was, you know, banana, uh, okay to be gay, whatever. And she's just like, no, no, no the most important lesson that they teach us in sex ed. Do you not remember it? I'm like, remind me? <laughs> and she said, it's always okay to say no. You should never do something that you don't want to do. So let me ask you a question. Do you want to go to bed with someone who you're not attracted to and jeopardize the relationship that you currently have just to be polite to somebody? <laughs> And I said, no. And she's like, you should probably tell him all of what I've just said because I'm sure he's very confused by your behavior. And as I'm sitting in this moment, I realized that I have just broken so many rules and just, of just basic common sense. I was worried that she might break up with me in that moment. And I said, are you mad at me? Like, are you gonna break up with me? And she said, no, I'm not mad at you. You got a little bit confused and that's okay as well. I was like, oh, that's good. And she's like, but I do have to go. And so I was like, okay, sweetheart, I love you. And she goes, yeah, night homo, I'll see you later. Click and hung up the phone. <laughs> Thank you very much.